Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited for today's show. Handle the lump, heal your life, part. Ta -da -da -da. Are you ready for this? Part 11. Can you believe it, Dana? I'm with my beautiful co host, Dana Terrio. Dana, welcome to the show. Thanks, Cornelia. Yay, 11, our lucky number. That's your number. That's your number. You, because you know, you've been talking about number 11, sending me texts all the times when you're experiencing, I just saw 11, 11, 11, 11. And 11 is a master number, right? It's, it's, it's also, um, it's a very powerful number because uh, it gives us so many intuitive portals that we can move through and move up into higher level of consciousness. So today, Handle the Lump, Heal Your Life, Part 11. It's been 11 shows since your baby, since you brought us this handle. So tell us, for the new listeners that are tuning in, what is the Handle the Lump, Heal Your Life series about? Handle, handle the Lump, Heal Your Life is, it, it's funny that you asked that because I was telling someone today what I was doing and when I told them the title, I didn't need to say anything else. She thought it was pretty self-evident. So that makes me happy. Handle the Lump really for women handling the lump of breast cancer, but really it's just, it applies to men, women, for everybody handling the lumps and bumps of life. And healing your life, heal your life is very Louise Hay-esque. It's very much about getting to the root cause because there's transformation and then there's transactions. So we handle the cancer, we take care of it, but then the real work begins. As our guest knows today, we get, we get to go in the deep dive and find out where the cancer comes from. And as we said before, it happens in malignancy happens in the consciousness first and the formless before the form. So really it's, it's not just about the cancer, the cancer is a symptom. So we're all about the signs and signifiers. Yeah. And it's, it's really been amazing. The uh, guests that you've brought on the doctors from around the world that have, um, that are empowering women into, uh, you know, moving beyond cancer, living beyond cancer. And like you said, Handle the Lump isn't really just about cancer because we're now, after doing 11 shows, we've slowly started bringing in different educators and uh, influencers that are br bringing forward higher consciousness on self-healing. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm also excited to hear this story today and meet this incredible woman that we have on. Um, but I just want to say, I was thinking this morning about the handle the lump. And handle the lump really is a lump in anything in your life, right? It could be, it could be anything. And that's the, the brilliance and beauty of being willing to look at what that is and uh, releasing it and letting it go so that you can return to wholeness, right? That's right. That's the work. That is the work. That is the work. And one, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm having Ashley put together all our, our shows that we've done on this series on one document. Once we get that together, we're going to take it and put it on the channel so that when people are watching the series, when people are, you know, following up with part 11, 12, and so on, that they'll be able to just click underneath and, and have access to all the other past shows we've done in the series because it's been such incredible healing. As you know, I the, the home I live in here, I'm going to be moving from this home. And the person that's moving into this home is a woman that uh, has stage four breast cancer. And so I find it so synchronistic that she's moving into the home that in these walls that we've recorded this handle handle your lump heal your life series that she's moving into this space and that everything is is already there for her and there's all the love and there's all the support and there's everything that she needs in order to to heal and so it just you know i love this home and I, I know there's going to be something better for me as I move, right? But um, it just makes me feel so good to know that 
we've created this series and that this woman is coming in to experience this. So it's, it's such an honor and a pleasure to co-create this together with you. And as you know, the, um, I champion humanity's sovereignty, the authority over one's own life as empowered creation. And as a woman who healed my body, my life, right? I um, really, ins I'm really inspired by other people that are also activating their self healing template. And that's what our guest today is also doing and has done and so i'm looking forward to hearing her story and she's she's part of our network she has her own show so i'm excited about that and why don't you introduce her to us dana happy to and isn't that apropos may some good mojo land with your new tenant in your place i'm sorry you have to move but it's true i mean if you have to leave you're beginning someone else's your closure someone else's beginning may they land with good health and the good mojo for everything that you've brought there and for number 11 it's so funny that all three of us in the transformation talk radio family so it's just talk about an alignment of the stars that it, we're all having this come together so i'm so happy to introduce our guest today that i met entirely outside of transformation talk radio but yet in canada too so allow me to introduce our special guest so Tracy L. Clark is a remarkable leader and pioneer in the field of body regeneration. She's the founder of the TLC Community of Extraordinary Living and creator of the Body Regeneration Method. Tracy serves on a global level as a facilitator, soul specialist, teacher, international speaker, and humanitarian. Tracy came into the world sick, riddled with physical ailments and disease. She may live an extraordinary life, but she had no ordinary entrance into this world. At the tender age of five, Tracy was kidnapped. This terrifying event added and acted as the catalyst, really, that opened up her heart to all of her gifts in a unique way. Tracy dedicated her life to the TLC community of extraordinary living to help change as many lives as possible. What I love and what sets Tracy apart in my experience of Tracy, because I've had some encounters now, uh, Tracy is, she walks the talk, really. Uh, Tracy doesn't just talk about what's not working in your life she creates real substantial change in your life with real shifts tracy shares her ground groundbreaking body regeneration method handing you the tools to overcome trauma pain suffering and adversity welcome to the show tracy l clark so excited to be here with you two amazing ladies and i just have to say Karnia, when you were talking about moving and that lady coming in, I got so many chills because what a divinely guided, like if this is not, if people listening, this is happening all day long and you can just see the nurturing she's gonna get from being there. So we're just, let's bless her some more. And I know not so fun when you have to move, but what a blessing you're giving her. What well, a blessing. Thank you for that. I appreciate you saying that, that you got chills. It's all divinely guided. And you know, when, when my landlord told me, gave me this news that I'll be, it's not until July. The first thought when they told me that it's their, you know, it's their sister-in-law that's going, yeah. to, um, going through that. Uh, the first thought I had was I wanted to send her the series that we did on the Handle Your Lamp, Heal Your Life. And so send her all the shows so that she has all the support. And that was my first thought, not that I'm leaving my beloved home, right? Not that I, you know, the home I absolutely love and adore. And um, well, that wasn't my first thought. So it's really cool. I love it. I love stories like that. And I'm so honored to be with both of you amazing ladies. And I do, as, as you both said, even when Dana and I bumped into each other, we had no idea. We were both all on this network and the way this family has come together to help so many people so many people on the planet grow and shift as we were just talking about it's it's a pretty big time of change and an amazing time absolutely absolutely you know i um well dana go for it <laughs> i i you can go ahead i mean go ahead to, <laughs> i saw in tracy's notes i saw in tracy's notes that um she had a near-death experience and this really mm -hmm. fascinates me because I, I would like to, is that, that, is that? 100%. I actually had three, so you can take your pick. 
let's let's talk about it. <laughs> this is the part where we're going to invite Tracy. Tell us a bit about you, Tracy, because I, mean, I can't just drop that in the internet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you your bio here is pretty long, so I really just you know extracted a bit of the gold, but there's much that uh, much mystery that remains. So just tell us, Tracy. Tell us about you. Yeah. yeah, you know what, happy to share. So in a nutshell, because, you know, it does take time and it's a process, but being born, born quite sick, ill, so I had many different ailments, damaged nervous system, a stomach valve that wasn't uh, open, it was sealed shut, but they didn't know at the time, a very concave chest, so my, my hips, legs, everything weren't attached. That was my entrance into the world, and the doctors didn't really know what was wrong with me. You know, in the early 70s, they didn't really pay attention to stuff like that. We weren't in a big city, so... Just as about as I was ready to check out, a doctor sort of came and said, I think I know what's wrong with your daughter, but keep in mind, they sent me home for six weeks with medicine while I was kept throwing food up. So there was nothing my body could hold on to. So they strapped me to bed and fed me through my crown chakra, which if anybody knows, that is the worst place that you can stick a needle into a body. And uh, yeah, so from there, life was just thrown with a lot of trauma a lot of dysfunction in the family, a lot of disease, and I kept getting more ailments like diverticulitis, irritable bowel, ulcers at five. I lived on a machine, like you name it, I kept getting hit with it. And I didn't realize until a lot, until I got older, what was happening um, as empaths as you guys are, and we all are. And who, who's going to tell a, you know, a little child back then? Nobody knew what was happening. And so, it was a very rough go and literally many days just especially after the kidnapping when I, I was only just about I'd just been around five years old and um, that opened a lot of trauma as you can imagine and also opened gifts but they weren't to the everybody likes to see nice things I wasn't seeing nice things um, it was very heavy but my first near-death experience, I was seven years old, and I was actually in the hospital. So there was a lot of, I have to say this for people listening. I thank God every day, God of my understanding, your understanding, but I thank God every day because there was supernatural pull when I look back of how many times I was pulled, you know, to leave and pull back in. And I actually went for allergy testing, which was at the time standard, you know, where they prick on the back and see what you needed the hundreds and according to them I was allergic to everything the sun the moon the rain everything so they wanted to give me an injection to see what would happen a very very small dose and if anybody knows me even my partner he knows no medicine my body will not I am not me and medicine are not friends very very different and I literally I flatlined I, I remember to this day rolling over and I flat flatlined and I remember everything left and at that one, everyone was a little different. I'm not going to say I saw that light or whatever, but I had peace. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want to come back. They called. They had to crash cart me to try to get me to come back. When I woke up, my first thought was, I was seven, and I'll never forget it. I looked mm -hmm. up. I'm in this gown, and I went, I don't want to be here. I want to go back there because mm -hmm. there was peace. And I had another one um, when I was – late twenties on another one in my early thirties. And I kept trying to leave and trying to leave. And my, the ones that made it very difficult to stay was I cannot replicate for anybody, the sound, the colors when I left to the other side. And then I just heard, the music is like nothing I can replicate. I've tried to find it. And I heard you have to go back for your children. You have a mission. And I went, and the last one, when I went back in, it was so interesting because my daughter, a couple days later, she'd said to me, Mommy, what would happen if I found you dead? And I said, well, that's not going to happen, which was a real eye-opener that I had to get my crap together. My body was failing. The doctors were now telling me it was going to be a fourth one, and I probably wouldn't come back. And at that point, I didn't, the, with being experiencing on the other side of the peace, the love, I call it my heaven. It was, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't have a fear of dying, but it also gave me a lot of complete feeling within. I know everybody has different experiences, 
But if, you know, I would say if there's ever that rough day when I was going through my big hurdles to get rid of my ailments and put my life back on track and the abusive marriages and all these things we all go through, it was really, that was the, what I held on to. I was like, there's this beauty on the other side. But you, it's hard to explain to someone because that level of peace, it's not here. Well, it is now, I have to say, but it's still not. Like, I, it's just... That is just freedom and peace and beauty. I, I can't describe to, it's very hard for me to describe, but to get that, you're going, got to go back. You have a mission. And I'm like, okay, it took me three times to have to keep being sent back, but it is, yeah, it was a real wake up call and it was a, a very different experience and traumatizing, obviously for the people around at those times, but it was just, I had enough. I, I was just every day I used to pray, take me out, let me out. I want to go. I don't want to be here anymore. Get I rid of me. Relate, I can relate to the things that you're saying. I I had thoughts when you were a little girl. Mm -hmm. And um, do you feel, I mean, before you said you were an empath, I wrote down on my paper here, before you said you were an empath, I wrote down empathic um, because I felt like you were picking up all these things from all, all the people around you. Uh, but the second question that came up that I thought about was, um, did you come in with, did you come in, did you come in born with some of these um, ailments? Do you feel, I mean, I know that you know, but you know, did you feel like you were born with some of these things? Did you bring, did you incarnate that? Um, I did. Um, a few things I realized as I was uncoupling emotions and looking at, at things. Uh, a few I was born with. I've had experience of so the pyloric stenosis, interesting enough. I had, there was a bunch of past life information that came up and craziest story ever, but basically that was past life. <laughs> and I came in with this lifetime of rectifying it. And if anybody's done any of that work, it comes up and you, you can't, when somebody's regurgitating this stuff back to you and your body's feeling it and it's leaving you and, I was so angry and having to realize it's a different timeline, not now, but very, very connected. But I also came in with a lot of imprinting because what I realized was my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother had a lot of the same ailments that I carried. Mm. So I, I always say I was like the laundry cleaner that came in to stop this cycle and that eventually, you know, I got hit over the head enough to wake up and go, okay, I don't have to live like this. And I started to see, like, we even had the same abusive marriages, bad marriages, physical traumas, like rapes. Like, we'd gone through the same stuff, all of us, right? So that was an imprinting line. So I had two. I had some past life stuff to clean and then the imprinting line from my family that I can say my kids... I did it so they wouldn't have to clean it out and they have they have very blessed lives and they'll be the first to tell you they haven't gone through any of it and that was a driving factor yeah wow incredible it's absolutely incredible and thank you for the work that you're doing and that you're still here to you know clear the ancestral lineage and and help us co-create a benevolent new world together right Yes. Well, that's what it's about. You know, now when I look back and for people struggling, like I get what it's like. You guys get what it's like when you're like, why me? And what am I doing? And how can I get out? And you said it really well, like, yes, empathic, but I was picking up everything. But as children, I didn't know. Nobody could explain it. And that's why my stomach was so bad. Like, just picking up all the trauma and the yelling and the fighting and the, you know, the being kicked out of the house when you're five and it's midnight and you're landing on a bus with a garbage bag, not knowing what's happening. And like, it's just like all of this stuff, my body didn't know what to do with it. And what's remarkable is that it sounds like you, you quit everything cold turkey <laughs> because you had an inheritance. You come into this world with these blueprints that are not truly yours, but you bring with, and yet you stop the cycle. I mean, if this goes back, it is remarkable that your daughters got to skate and escape all of this. I mean, that's, that's your work. 
Well, and I think one of the blessings of having them as well is they showed up very intuitive. So literally when I started on my path, they were five and eight. So one, one would see very clearly, a lot clear. I go in and out like you guys do, but she would like not know what was a person and what was not a person. And the other one would hear. So we were able to work through that together. Whereas 17 years ago, that wasn't common at all so i believe that that also started to help them on their journey so they knew how to deal with their gifts too you know it I, i'm sure that's correct it, it started so young for them yeah so they're so blessed that way um it's interesting that article that both hooked us uh, that we were both captivated by it can you say something more about this because it was it was pretty heavy and dense and rich for me and i wasn't wrapping my head around it and I'm a pretty heady geeky gal I think I really dig that science stuff but I was like this is really tough to do it's not digestible it's said that the, the wave of children coming into this world now I mean this is kind of off topic but really not talking about the hyper communication that the collective group consciousness many of the children being born now are coming into this world much more clairvoyant than ever what does that really mean is that the empath stuff yeah, these children, and I, I'm sure you both see it, they are so intuitive. And you can see how the old programming is trying to stifle them and the systems haven't changed. But I would have to agree with that because the kids that I see, the kids that I talk to, they get it. Like they, they know what's going on in someone else's brain. They also are a lot more connected to their emotions. So they're really here to help wake more up as like more of the people and their parents and say, guys, let's wake up. Like we've been under a rock for too long and they get it. Like all the children I find and Cornelia, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I find with the children that every year for the last 17 years, as I've been watching them, they are getting stronger, more connected. I know they have names and labels for them, but they're like this whole beautiful little army that's come down to say, guys, wake up, be in love, be in compassion, care about each other, care about the planet. And they've been trying to just stuff them down. Which yeah. does inspire hope because all we hear are the labels, like you say. So that's the, not the, happy. The children are the, co are, are the co-creators. They are future leaders. And so they're, they're not going to take this crap. They are not going to take the old crap. They're... There, you know, our way forward is the intuitive path and really coming from right brain creative abilities, our intuitive abilities. And these children are wired for it and they're not going to take the old programming that is obsolete because their DNA isn't wired for it. They, they just, they can't. So they're going to demand, not from, you know, I demand, not this way, maybe. Uh, but they're going to stand for what they believe in. They, they're just going to they're just going to do it. And the, the, like you said, Tracy, these kids today, I mean, I just look at them and I'm just like blown away how awesome they are. And just I just oh gosh, you know, Dana, I, I look at you and I see, you know, you and Sarah and I just, you know, what are you, you have this beautiful young daughter and what a great time to be a mother on this planet to influence and you know support these upcoming leaders on this planet so that they can really truly be who it is that they are and you know help this heaven on earth become actualized you know worldwide you know thanks for saying that cornelia i do i have to say sarah just i always say she just she came into this world on a high vibe. <laughs> she just I'll spend the rest of my life trying to catch up to her, but she just has it and it's all her. Um, and just to keep it, you know, I know you really get this, Tracy, but can you kind of like simplify this? And I don't want to say dumb it down, but distill simplicity for truth to say that these children, we don't want to be talking voodoo on the show. No. To say that children come into this world much more clairvoyant, what does that really mean? Because I don't want people thinking we're talking about all uh, yeah, we don't want to be getting off on those floors. I'm totally with you. That's not me. Um, well, the way I look at that, for people to really understand, is these children are just, they're more heart-centered. They're more compassionate. They have empathy. They have more humility. So they can see what somebody else requires easier. And it's not, they don't, it's, 
people think they're trying to buck, you know, authority and we, but we've grown up in this world of do what your grandparents did and your mother and all of this. And they're coming with a new programming that says, let's see what each other requires. We would like to work together. And yes, there are some children that still have that programming that they see in imprints of maybe it's bullying or something, but like we have, a, I'm going to tell you this beautiful story. We have this young boy david that has come with his mom to different workshops and he was deemed as all these terms oh, and them. you might have met david now david is is eight and david has such a capacity of love and kindness and at school they would say oh he's restless he's this, like so many labels yet he could come to a whole weekend workshop and pick up this information and go and go into the love of the world and not make a peep and he can regurgitate things I've said when people don't even think he's paying attention. Like these are the types of children that are so intelligent. And he was, his mom let me know the other day, he was on the playground and somebody had called one of the children a very bad name and then turned to him and called him a very bad name. And he basically turned around and said, that's not in love and compassion. You can't call her that. He said, and you can't call me that. But this is what I mean with these kids that if you really look at them, they are coming and teaching people to use their words, to be in kindness. And it's unfortunately, a lot of it is they keep trying to sweep them under the rug. But a lot of these kids like David, they're leading the way from the heart. That's what it is. And they're like, how can we take care of our planet? How can we be more in compassion to each other, no matter where you are in the world? And they don't want to do the things the way they did before because they know intuitively, they sense there's an easier, better way than just being slaves to systems. These kids know it. That's why they're breaking down these barriers. They're like, let's do it easier where everyone can thrive and everyone can be together and everyone can prosper. And I see it in children all the time. Wow, this is incredible. You know how it goes here at, on the network. It's time to take a break. So now we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more with Tracy Clark. We'll be right back. We're back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show with co-host Dana Terrio and our special guest today, Tracy L. Clark. During the break, we were talking about the children of today and how awesome it is that they truly have a place now of support that they can go to because during the times when we were children, we didn't have that. Tracy, what were you saying? Just pick up whatever where you Yeah, left. well, I know it's, it's really nice that this is opening. One of the things is I know with what I teach and watching the children, we have a plan to get it into the schools because mm -hmm. It has to happen because we were saying all of us when we were little and we all wanted to leave because we were picking up energies. We were picking up the feelings of our parents or the surroundings, friends, environments, and nobody was there to explain to us how amazing those gifts are. So we just would all feel we were crazy and we got to get out of here and we don't fit. And I'm, I'm sure you guys had that experience. You're going, I don't fit. Am I not supposed to be in this world? Like I'm not like everyone else. And we go through all this mental chatter. And now I knew I was saying before that I know with me, if I hadn't had my children, I wouldn't have stayed. I would have made every aspect that I could to get out. And they kept me here. But now that children have a place to go and listen and I have kids that come all the time with their parents and they're like I'm actually awesome and I've got these great abilities and then they like to pretend they got you know all their superpowers and you see a complete shift where they can go back into these environments and help other kids understand their superpowers which is so important so important yeah. You've done a lot of healing. You've done a lot of work on yourself to fully be embodied and self-actualized. And you've developed amazing work with your own uh, healing modality and tools. Tell the audience today where we can find out more about what it is that you're offering and so that we can um, know. Well, TracyLClark.com. But my big thing, I, you know, we've now kind of switched it to the Body Regeneration Academy. Why? Because there was a component that I really, on my healing and journey over 17 years, when I really anchored in, I say, my faith or my God of the understanding, which for me is trust and belief. There's whatever feels right for somebody, it's, it's bigger than us. 
But when I started to anchor that connection, I realized that, wow, there's all these simple tools people can do to be empowered. I don't want people not being empowered and relying on me. I want people to walk away and they're in a board meeting. They got a tool if they're feeling overwhelmed and how they can talk to their body and talk to the higher being and go, oh my gosh, and transform not only their life on the spot, but somebody else's. So we really love to, I love to focus on total empowerment because it's not my life, it's your life, their life. And so those are the tools we teach is what can you do to connect to what your body's telling you, your words, your connection, so you go out and you change a whole bunch of other lives. So I, it's really, that was my link. When I brought that other piece in and that real faith, because when you know, when you guys, when we're going through our journey, if we don't trust and no one believe in this greater presence that perhaps people haven't had the opportunity to really tap into, it's, it can be very hard. <laughs> it can be very, very difficult. So when you do, you finally realize I'm never alone. I'm never alone ever. Yeah. And you're talking about whole body empowerment, whole body empowerment. And it's yes. an experience. This I know. <laughs> Inside and out. <laughs> you know, when you, I, when you said superpowers, it made me think, would you speak to, uh, because you've overcome cancer. It's like for you, it's like cancer. Oh yeah, that too. Like it's just because you've overcome so much. <laughs> no. would you speak to uh, a couple of things, the cancer yeah. personality, because very much I like I'm as a highly sensitive person, deep yeah. feeling, deep thinker, speak to that about the personality, the C. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I know you you posted some stuff about those personalities and traits. And for me, it was cervical. I actually told the doctors, I'm like, you need to do some tests. And she's like, why? I'm like, I'm getting rid of the anger with my ex-husband, I think. And she's like, okay, I'm not even going to question you because I've seen you get rid of things I can't even you know, discuss. So she called me back and we did these tests. She was like, how, how did you know? I said, I told you. And yes, there's a lot of your, you're correct. I think for a lot of us, um, we don't have very good boundaries. We're pleasing people all the time where our empathetic space takes over. We forget about ourselves and we're just giving and giving. There's a reason for that. We forgot to love and nurture ourselves. And then it just sort of shows up. And reading that article about different personalities, some of it I agree. And then some of it I'm like, I have this thing. I'm like, I'm not taking in any of that because we're done with that. We don't want to deal with that. I always call them the just the nasty cells. I don't even like putting names on them. Because <laughs> your body hears it, right? Yeah, and your body true. picks it up. But um, I noticed that was a big thing. It's like taking on all the burdens, the responsibilities, and then we're not getting nurtured. And when we're not getting nurtured, especially for women, you know, in the cervix, and there's a big area with the cervix going on. We know that in the world and prostate and colon. Why? That's our power zone. That's our, our business, our career, our nurturing of children. And then breasts are all around that nurturing, right? And bringing that energy in. And so when we stop doing that for ourselves and then it just sort of falls apart. And when I realized that and letting go of all those emotions, for me, my journey was hardcore for a year. I took a different route, um, hardcore in terms of saying, okay, let's monitor markers and stuff. We sort of said if they went up, then okay, I'll look at it your way. If they go down, then let's, you know, we had our set points. So, you know, with the team and everybody doing that, I didn't tell anyone in my family. I didn't want any of their fear. Yeah, um, yeah. Nothing. Get that. And yeah. I had already been five years on my healing journey. So I had somebody I was working with at that time. And this is what I say to people, never, never discount because when we're on our journey, anything can come out at any time. So never be hard on yourself. I went through fear. I went through panic. I went through, oh my gosh, my kids, which I think most people go through. It's normal. Uh, I, and I chose, I had spent time over in Asia a lot. And also, so I never went to India, but I did a lot of research on their forms of energy and medicine and the science behind it. So I took a different approach. And I said, it was funny, watch your words. I said to the, the team, let's do this for a year. I want to do it my way. I want to monitor. And they were like, what? You know, like, no, no, no. I said, if, so if they change, then I'll, I'll listen. But I said, if nothing's changed in a year, I'll listen. Do you know a year, 
a year to the exact day I got them, them, they called me on that same day. They said, it's been a year. You're clean. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm like, it. it chills. And I got, and then they sent me a letter, obviously, cause you get all that follow up letter. And, uh, I was in the car and I opened it and my daughter, my, both my daughters were with me. Well, then I had to hear it. What do you mean you didn't tell us? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, because I didn't want any of this. I didn't want any interference. I didn't want anybody else's story. I went through this and that. Because what I learned from really learning to communicate to the body, I didn't want their fears. I didn't want their imprints. I was on lockdown mode. Like, I'm doing everything I need to do. Yeah. And you know what? It's like, this is exactly, you're the perfect, perfect example of what it, what it looks like when a woman fully claims her full healing capabilities and fully standing in her sovereignty Yeah, to, you know, all the places where we would give our power away to outside sources, outside influences. And you fully did that in the face of all of it. And you wanted to do it your way. And once you did that, everything changed. Oh, and you know how hard that was, because that was another hard. test of my boundaries, because I was still very used to, at that point, I was five years in, I had a lot to move, but I would still defer to authoritative people. So, and I had really had to go in and I was working with my mentor and teacher at the time. And she said, well, I can't tell you what to do, but here's all just, you don't have to rush tomorrow, sit with it. And I'm just like, okay, thank you. I what then I couldn't say God. I'm like, if there's anything out there, spirit, <laughs> universe, like show me. And it just, I just, in my heart, I knew. So yeah, did I go different ways? Some of the things might've seemed a little weird to people. But I just kept following what felt right, and we kept following up. And it was, yeah, it wasn't easy to do that because people look at you, like in the medical community, because you have a team, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, no, no, let's let's go this way. So, or oh, yeah. I would say you accessed your inner rebel because you went counter conventional medicine <sighs> because when you said that your mentor said, you don't have to rush this, that's the exact opposite of what they say in the medical machine, as I say, it's because it's very, oh, yeah. they, they operate in the system of fear. They do. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell this great story because I believe there's beautiful healing energy and testimonials. If anybody's listening, oh, yeah. we had a lady who had gone through some uh, colon cancer. And I said to her, well, they don't want to put you on, on any more, uh, any radiation or anything. They'd taken out the polyps. I said, yes, it's, it's stage two at that time. So it was, it was okay. But they said, we're going to start chemo in a month. And I said to her, are you willing to do something a little bit different? And she said, I am. And she's been doing her journey. And I said, okay. So she, she ended up, before the treatment, they tested her and they said, you're clean, but this isn't possible. So we want to do the chemo for insurance purposes. <laughs> ah. So she struggled and they pushed her so bad. I said, I can't tell you what to do. And she struggled. But I said to you, so they ended up going forward and I, so she had her naturopathic doctor and me, I said, I can't tell you because there was so much fear. Oh. I said, but your tests say you're clean. <laughs> okay. You know, for me, that's enough, but I get for some, it wasn't, but I will tell you, she's actually halfway through her treatment and her symptoms are almost none, which is rare. And they're like, everything seems to be flowing very nicely, which are like, they, they don't understand what's going on here. So I said to her, there's also for people going through, there's lots of, lots of support that can happen when you're going through this. And guess what? Similarity, she was also getting rid of, a, I told her, a lot of anger with her ex-husband. <laughs> so, I want to ask you, Tracy, was that a client or a friend of yours? A client, yeah. A client. Well, yeah. you know, part of the reason why she was already, this is what I got. Part of the reason why she was already symptom free is because of working together with you mm -hmm. and a person that's already done that work it's already existing a qu in the quantum field, in your energy Amen. field. And even every word that you speak is a healing frequency. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's emitting a sound. And so that was also serving. And, you know, yeah, that's what I got. I love it. It's so true. And it's so empowering for people to hear that, I believe, and to hear other people's testimonials of yeah. what connection really does because it creates as all of us have gone through this incredible healing power in the body 
but you got to be willing to claim it. You yeah. got to be willing to claim it. And I loved hearing you talk about your experience with authority, the oh. before and after, because imagine yeah. you were still facing the authority stuff that's coming up after all the work that you did mm -hmm. a lifespan because this has been happening for you since a child and you know the type a personality is just to bring clarity to this enclosure yeah. that the type a is very high strong often they say very leaning into the affliction tendency of heart disease type b is easy breezy where the type c is the cooperative com compliant it doesn't want to rock the boat and conflict avoidant and all costs so so you bring that mm -hmm. to a cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. there have at it that's your ultimate test if you it had is a true. Finished business have at it yep. <laughs> your chance to finish up because that was that was actually me and i think it's a lot of us that go down that road and then when you realize to step in the power it's crazy how quickly it shifts out of the body the body's like oh i don't need this anymore Okay. Yeah. You were ready to go ahead, Cornelia. I was going to say, once we're ready and really fully to step into quantum healing and what it is that we really came here to do, it's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. We, we could choose to override the exit point that we had originally written into the blueprint of wanting to exit out, but we can override it with our consciousness today and with our choice and our willingness, right? And it comes down to a choice. And then we just have to go through the motion of uh, how, however long the physical body will take to catch up to that high vibration of intention of choice that was made. I love what you said there, because that's something people miss. Like I said, they focus on, oh, it's not there yet. Like they wake up tomorrow and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Your energetic vibration is far ahead. Let your body catch up. Just be gentle on it. But people will hammer it until they see the result. And I'm like, the more you're hammering it, the body can't catch up. I love that point you just made. It's so true. Awesome. Tracy, we're celebrating your birthday on March the 2nd. <laughs> yes. Oh, happy birthday, goddess queen of the world. Thank you. Tell happy us birthday. where we're going to be going. Where are you going to be to celebrate, celebrate with you? The joy, I would say, my, my daughter and my uh, my friend have surprised me, partly because my partner, he's out of town. <laughs> so I think they've done this all on, on one. But we're going to a beautiful spa. Um, now, I'm not French, so people who speak French, I'm sorry, at Mont Tremblay, which is in Quebec in Canada. It's outdoors. It's saltwater healing pools. It's, yeah, it's uh, infrared saunas, hot pools, cold pools, which you know are so good for the body. And we're going to do massages in the treehouse. Oh, man. Decadent. I know. I'm so yeah. excited. You're <laughs> your beautiful daughter's on your birthday you know i just your your those women must be so thrilled to have their mother with with them in now at this stage of of the evolution because as many times as you tried to check out and the fact that you are still here that you can witness their uh creative expression and their evolution what they came here to do and the fact i always say this to my clients and people that i work with is that you know, the healing that you do on yourself is the healing that you do in your ancestral lineage, in your family mm -hmm. line. If you're the one, you're the one. And, you know, it goes back seven, seven generations back and seven generations forward. It, this is just how it is. And so the work that you do on yourself is going to heal so that your children or your grandchildren don't ever have to experience anything that you've experienced. Yeah, and that's such a it should be a driving factor, I think, for everybody. They always say, "Oh, I want you know my kids to be amazing." I'm like, then do the work. Yes, do the work because exactly like what you just said, forwards and backwards, you're making a shift. And yeah, but my kids are still my kids. Like that's just my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, very blessed. And we're all so blessed to see the transitions of people around us. And so, yes, it's going to be an amazing weekend. I'm very excited to be able to, to celebrate. And I always believe our birthdays, what I've seen energetically, is actually our New Year's. So 
I always joke that New Year's that everybody celebrates, if you really understand January 1, that's when Caesar decided to put in taxation. So I'm like, <laughs> why are we celebrating that? You know, but our real New Year's, our shift with numbers and numerology and what we're doing on the planet and who we are as beings is our birthday. So I say to people, celebrate. Celebrate as much as you can because this is another new beginning in our chapters of when our birthdays are. So what's next for you in your new beginning? What's next for me? That's a big question. We have so much we've been creating. Um, I, our initiative fund uh, is on a whole new leg, a whole new growth. We have a TLC initiative fund. We do Soul Sunday services online, which helps people and families in need. And that's our next big area where you're going to see it more on the website, helping people around the world and um, how it's being set up. And eventually, I am actually, I will disclose this, but I'm in training for uh, non-denominational reverendship. So we'll be turning things more into a ministry to um, help more people around the world and, and do it in a diff little bit of a different way, but incorporate everything together. So when I say, when I hear, we do. So it's gonna be, and I have a book coming out this year, so. Yeah, I'm editing. <laughs> I'm editing. Everybody knows that process, right? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Dana is in the middle of writing her book, and I wrote a book, believe it or not, on you peace, have... peace and anger. So yeah. you know, peace, the ultimate, highest vibration that we can experience, right? That that peace yeah. that you were talking about to live in uh, when we're when we're transitioning. That peace that you can't yeah. like, describe. That peace. You and can't describe it. That's why I knew you two would understand the process. <laughs> Writing it is one crazy process. Editing another one and getting it out there, another one. So we're in the Dude. final editing stage. So. But Tracy, will you let us know when your uh, your funding thing that you just talked about begins? Yeah. And will you post it on my uh, Facebook page, my personal page there? I always yeah. uh, allow people to post on my page that are sharing uh, wonderful acts of kindness you know, yeah. on my page that are doing the good works so that people um, have positive places to tune into. I would love to do that because like I said, it's, we are still helping people all the time. It's sort of, everyone knows that's why we do our soul Sundays and everything gives back and we let people know the families we've helped, but um, yeah, it'll be actually actualized as a real fun. <laughs> that's great. I'm looking forward to supporting that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations on your book, Tracy. I know it's eight years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to leave everyone on high hope vibration. I know that you really, you jumped on it right away. The revolutionary rough Russians, what they discovered, science has finally caught up. Can you speak to that bit, please, about how we can actually truly alter DNA? And this is science now. It's not just what the ancients knew. <laughs> You know, what I, what I would have liked to say to that, because I studied science for, first before I even looked at spirituality or ministry, I was a science nerd because don't tell me anything that wasn't outside of science, that's where I went. And um, the way we've caught, caught up, and I love saying this, is that I used to always say the mind was outside of the body, and now they're saying that. But with science, a lot of people need that understanding of seeing the proof of what we're doing energetically. And you can see, I said, there can't be rejection anymore between science, spirituality, ministry. It's got to come together. No more rejection and how we can complement each other. So if people are skeptic, they can go to all this data now and say, wait a minute we are changing we're changing how we function we change how we show up and we change which changes our body like they are finding uh, we're all proof when we've gotten yeah. rid of things and they've said you can't and they're like your dna doesn't have that imprinting anymore yeah it doesn't have it anymore yeah that's right yeah. and the new science goes beyond the lifestyle and diet and exercise it's it's just fascinating that article that i know captivated both of us it really it's encoded with language like we really can change it like can the science link, says can, we can do it can we link that article here in the uh youtube video when when we sh share the video later that article that you two i didn't get it i don't have the article okay yeah. yeah it's fabulous because it really shows you and that's why i'm so passionate about connection and talking to the body because by doing that you are changing what's going on in your body and i love that the science is backing that up i still find energetically we're still ahead but it's okay we still got proof coming from the science side so we're good <laughs>
Wonderful. Tracy Clark, you're amazing. Dana, you are absolutely adorable as always. <laughs> I love what we're up to. I love our network. I love our family. And I send many blessings to all of us that are out here that are putting our footprint down on how we want to live heaven on earth. Thank you so much for it. joining us on the show today. Thank you, audience, for listening and tuning in. We'll see you again next time on Handle the Lump, Heal Your Life, Part 11. See you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.